Hi everyone, uh, Josh Fletcher here from DS Laid uh, for another Unstructured Geeks uh, interview and uh, today I'm joined by, by Charles Godala from SAP. How are you Charles? I'm good Josh, how are you doing? Good, thanks. You're a um, Google Hangouts virgin so <laughs> thanks for joining us and, uh, and battling through the, the technology. Um, how are you finding it so far? Uh, a little bit of an echo but honestly it's good. I love it. Can't wait to use it more. Great. Well, um, so uh, first of all, uh, for those that, that don't know you, um, uh, you work for SAP. What's your role at SAP uh, and what do you do in the SAP ecosystem? Yeah, great question. I'm, uh, I'm in the advanced analytics team, so I work on predictive analysis. Uh, previous to this, I used to do the Google Maps integration, so don't tell my friends at Google that this is my first time on Hangout. But uh, other than that, I've been doing CVOM, I've been doing the Microsoft SharePoint integration, I did a little bit of work on uh, VOE in terms of the uh, .NET interfaces and that kind of stuff. So typically, it's been about eight years now in SAP, uh, mostly related on the business object side of the house and, uh, and, and BI and now predictive analysis. Okay, excellent. Um, so, you know, advanced analytics is, is definitely a, a hot topic for SAP. You know, it was mentioned uh, at TechEd quite heavily. There was, you know, special areas we could go and learn about um, predictive analytics. KXCN has just been acquired. It must be an interesting time. Um, for you in that team at the moment. Yeah, yeah and the SaaS partnership uh, announcement also at TechEd. So, I mean, uh, you know what it is? Uh, to be honest, Josh, I think it's the fact that ROIs are easily found through predictive analysis because we, mm. we return a probability or, or we return a number, right? And so if you're trying to justify an investment or why would you be interested in this particular technology, there is a bottom line that can be added to predictive analysis. So I think it's hot because it actually generates that ROI figure and you can measure mm. it, right? So, I think that's probably why there's a lot of interest in it. Fantastic. Um, so some questions uh, to get to know you better. Where, um, where are you right now? You look like you're in a hotel room. Maybe it's your bedroom. Um, yeah. Where are you right yeah. now, and, and where, do you, where do you live normally? <laughs> yeah, sure. No, I'm in Orlando, Florida for SAP Insider, a reporting analytics conference. Uh, so back in the Disney Resort, as usual. That's about my fifth time in Disney this year. I like, still haven't taken my children, so you can imagine my popularity at home is suffering. Uh, normally, I live in Vancouver, so home is uh, Vancouver, Canada, on the west coast. Okay. Great. Um, and what kind of mobile device are you carrying with you today? Yeah, um, several. <laughs> you wouldn't be surprised. An iPhone 5. I uh, also got the uh, iPad mini. Uh, my iPad Air mini? Um, looking for the uh, iPhone 6 to come next, but uh, gonna please. Yeah, but I'm interested in that too, yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, just not completely an Apple fanboy. I'm looking to see what the Galaxy uh, will come up with next year too, so fingers crossed. Okay. Excellent. When are we going to see some uh, predictive anal analytics on uh, on the iPads? You don't have to answer that. Yeah, you know what? Coming soon. Uh, we've actually got a mobile interface through SAP Lumira. Uh, no. Uh, well, actually, technically, you could probably do it today if you wanted to do the uh, Lumira Cloud integration. I could put a data set up for you. You could use predictive analysis, publish it back up. So theoretically, it's there, uh, but I'm trying to build an app, a dedicated app for it. Uh, so. Okay, excellent. Uh, so how long have you been involved in BI you know, before SAP, um, and, and how did you get started in, in this industry? Uh, wow, so uh, 1998, I joined uh, Seagate Software, which was the, had just acquired Crystal um, Ports at the time. So mm -hmm. I was working in Vancouver for uh, Terry Cunningham and Greg Kerfoot. Uh, it was a small team. I was, I was actually on the initial product launch team for Seagate Info 6, if you remember that. Uh, if you don't, don't worry. A few people do. Uh, but uh, that became uh, a spin-off. We were acquired by a company called Veritas, uh, which took the backend storage systems up because it was part of Seagate software. And uh, so they left the business intelligence unit and then they took a storage division. And then they spun out the business intelligence unit. It became Crystal Decisions and then that was acquired by Bob J. Uh, business Object, sorry. And then SAP. In the, in, in the time of Veritas to the spin out, I actually left uh, uh, Crystal or Seagate at the time and joined a, a small data mining company called Quadstone, which was based in the UK in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. And I was uh, the third employee to start the Boston office. So we were there uh, starting at the U.S. headquarters for uh, this uh, university school. I uh, spent four or five years uh, working with them, building uh, 
data mining uh, algorithms and equations on uh, the stock market crash of 2000 kind of wiped out a lot of our ambitions and dreams at the same time. And uh, we ended up uh, closing up and I moved to uh, Scotland to be with my wife uh, and joined the University of Edinburgh in the High Performance Computing Center doing parallel computing and grid computing and utility computing work there uh, for about two, three years and then moved back to Vancouver to rejoin uh, business office at the time. Okay, excellent. So, uh, so always been um, with vendors then? From the sounds of it, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. It's been kind of fun on this side. <laughs> Bit of a okay. hard fight sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what uh, what piece of technology is most exciting you, or, or like what what uh, technological direction that we're heading in is most exciting you uh, at the moment in the analytics space? You know, I, I think I'm actually at the intersection of it right now, which is the operational and the analytics coming together. So. Uh, for example, last week I was in Waldorf discussing with the SAP teams on how to put predictive analysis inside the SAP apps, right? So things like um, HRM, human resource management, uh, PRM, partner relationship management. Uh, so uh, 22 different teams in four days, and the amount of excitement around what was happening for advanced analytics and what it could do to supply chain management, to uh, TPO, APO, mm -hmm. Human resources, financial projections, all these kind of things, uh, and the fact that we're starting to use it not just externally and sell it as a product, but we're actually using them internally now. So, this morning we released the employee survey for SAP, right? And part of that will be done through a cluster analysis using SAP predictive analysis to identify where the areas of satisfaction are, where the areas of dissatisfaction are, where the gaps are, who's on a high-performing team, who's in the uh, you know the management might not be up to speed on what they need to do to help them progress. And we're using our own tools. So it's, I think the coolest technology intersection for me is the reality of bringing all this stuff we've been working on for years, with algorithms and maths and all that kind of stuff, and actually applying it and seeing a physical output in, in an operational system. Uh, and that's pretty neat. Yeah, that is, that is very exciting. Um, so, uh, well, you kind of just answered the other question I had around <laughs> which is where do you think BI is going, but I think that's a really <laughs> great example Same of, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess about the predictive space, uh, especially, um, uh, where do you go to find information about that? You know, if, if um, this is probably actually an even better question because we, you know, we, we we tend to ask this question for people. You know, if they're a BI person, where do they go to to kind of learn more or, or get information? But where do BI people go to learn more about predictive? And should they? Uh, great question. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, number why? Because you're future proofing. Remember that thing I said about the ROI, right? So now there's the rise of all these other competitors. And one of the distinguishing pieces is uh, this language called R. You know, what is this R language? What's the statistical language? It's not new, but it's an open source uh, language that allows us to use algorithms from the open source community and put them into our toolings. Uh, the reason you need to know about this is because it's disrupting the market, it's disrupting SaaS, right? So here's a company that's been around since the 70s, 60s, sorry, uh, with SaaS Institute, now mm -hmm. getting disrupted by an open source community project with five, four or five times the, the number of algorithms SaaS has. There's 5,000 algorithms in our language, right? So that's more than SaaS combined with SPSS combined with Statistica. So there is disruptive forces happening. And how do you learn about this? How do you stay on top of it? You have to be engaged in that community. Right? Start with things like SCM. You know, there's the predictive analysis page there. Read that, get involved with that. YouTube channels on where the big data story is, and you can see what the team under Irfan Khan is doing from the SAP side. Non-SAP sources, there's you know the, the CRAN R project, C R A N uh, R project is a great community site for everything to do with R. It's the R archive, the R library archives. It also has you know how to install it, and the downloads are available for free. Try them out, play with them, uh, build a couple of scripts. You know there's community support. It's an open source project, but uh, the earlier you get involved, the better. So that's uh, that's what I would recommend. Highly for BI stuff. Hmm. So a related question: Big data is it just hype, or is there actually value there for the average company? Yeah, uh, you know the term is becoming so overloaded. I'm not sure it really matters much anymore. But the concept is still valid. I mean, I'm not you know three Vs, five Vs, six Vs. I've lost track of how many Vs there are now in this big data story. But uh, let's just say, what's the concept? Right? Yeah, people need to go through a ton of data quickly to get an answer before their competition. Yeah, that makes sense. That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. And you want to get there with some accuracy, with some kind of indication. 
and and the thing that I think we add into that is uh, the unknown unknowns, right? Which is data mining. So the concept of uh, uh, predictive analysis versus data mining is in predictive analysis you may be more directed. You're looking for something. Right? Uh, I want to know why my sales went up in July uh, versus uh, you know uh, this year versus last year. Versus. That's I'm directing the analysis. In data mining, I'm looking for unknown unknowns. I don't know what I'm really going to find in the data, but I just want to find some st interesting pieces. And maybe I'll make sense of those and put them together later on to see what that story tells me. Right? Uh, and that, I think, you can only do on a big data story with a very powerful engine like, you know, of course you say HANA, but it could be another box, right? The concept of being able to sort through that to find the really interesting nuggets of information that you can combine and then tell a story we didn't know. And I'll bore you with one last example, but uh, we did a demo yesterday on the keynote, which was all about uh, soft drinks, large soft drinks vendor, uh, trying to manage their, their vending machines. It's a smart vending demo. So these machines are now enabled with, uh, you can swipe your phone in front of them or, or purchase by a, by an app, and you can get the, the vending machine to dispense uh, the soft drinks for you. Uh, but what it's trying to do is identify you as a person, because now it knows your phone number, it can identify your purchase with you know what you bought yesterday or the week before, and start to build a profile of you and say, okay, You've been buying a lot of the, you know, this diet cola, you may like this type of snack right? or another type of soda tomorrow. So it starts to get a profile of you. What they didn't know was how would they predict people who are heavy drinkers of colas? And we found out that a heavy cola drinker is actually related to whether or not you bought tortilla chips two weeks ago. Hmm. Who knew that? Right? Like that's not somewhere where you'd start and be at. You don't go, hey, let's look at all the tortilla chip purchasers two weeks ago to find out whether they were drinking Coke today, or, sorry, or cola today. Uh, so that's the idea behind you know, what's going on with uh, uh, the unknown unknowns. And I think that's a really cool piece of big data. Right? There's so much of these mm. kind in there that would move the needle for a company. Yeah, that's a really good example. Very interesting. Um, yeah. I, just by the way, I'll go back and, uh, and bleep out that bit where you said Hannah or another box because, you know, we want you to keep your, your job at SAP. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. I won't blip it up. Um, uh, two more questions. Two more questions for you. Uh, what's the biggest thing you've ever screwed up at work that that you can tell us about and won't get you fired? Oh, man. Uh, well, there's there's two examples. So I'll, I'll give you. I don't know if you remember. Uh, you've been in this industry a while too. So uh, back in the day, we did CR Viewer. I don't know if you remember uh, CR Viewer. It's a small free giveaway we gave back in 2007. Uh, that was able to view crystal reports. And the idea at the time was to build it like a, almost as ubiquitous as PDF, right? And people, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of crystal reports out there. Let's give people a way to view it and, and document it. And uh, I think we almost pulled the plug on it so soon that it hardly had a chance to get out the gate before we stopped investing heavily behind it. No marketing, no, no effort. Uh, so I really feel like that was one of the most under... Uh, uh, what had really strong potential was given up on too quickly, and I feel sad about that. That's one example. Uh, the other more recent one, I would say, is the same thing with uh, the SharePoint integration, the Microsoft uh, IOMS uh, SharePoint integration. Um, it's it's starting to get de-invested because a lot of the engineering teams are you know so busy with big flashy names with four letters and stuff H uh, that you can't get a lot of attention on some of these other technologies that uh, you know look at the size of SharePoint and the domination of SharePoint as a portal in the marketplace. Um, we need to have a better story on how we integrate with that, like, like uh, editing, parameterization of reports, uh, save back functionality, write back functionality, all that stuff. Uh, really, you need to make sharp, crisp on 2013 SharePoint, you know, getting ready for the next release, synchronizing with those releases. So uh, that was under my watch. We got it up to uh, 2000 SharePoint 2007 integration. We did the 2011. Uh, but 2013, I think, is lagging. And I, I, I don't raise my hand, but I think that we probably should put more effort on it. Okay, thanks. No, I'm playing. Uh, last one. Um, when you're not, uh, you know, uh, talking about predictive analytics and cola machines and, and and big data, what what do you like to do for fun outside of work? Oh yeah, well actually, uh, it's a, I'm a big golfer. I actually managed to get my handicap down to about a, a nine handicap uh, a few years back, but since I've been on this predictive kick, it's probably closer to fifteen. So I don't get the chance to play much golf anymore. So, uh, but that's my my hobby. But with four kids at home, really, it's I just watch them go. It's kind of my uh, my experience these days. It's the way to recharge. Right, hanging out with my son and uh, my three girls is where I get energy from. Excellent. Good. Okay. Well, 
Thanks again, Charles, for uh, for taking the time to join us, uh, especially from from a conference. I know it's always hard to squeeze in time, but um, we really appreciate uh, getting to know you a little bit better. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by EV Technologies. Visit us on the net at savethecms.com. Day Slayer!